Hello everyone. In this video, we will be discussing about design of machine elements to module 3. So, uh, this module 3 consists of two major topics that is bevel gears and warm gears design. So, we will be learning the definition of bevel gears and the definition of warm gears, uh, its classification types, material used, the design procedure and uh, the related derivations, the formulas, everything we will be studying and finally we will be learning uh, how to design a bubble gear and similarly how to design a warm gear. I hope already in module 2 we had very detailed discussion on uh, what is gears, its definition and the major two types of gears that is per gear and helical gear we discussed. Since already we had discussion on uh, two major uh, designs of spur and helical uh, this uh, module would be very easy for us. Almost the design procedure uh, uh, remains same, except uh, you know like the small changes uh, based on the working of uh, the gears. What we are uh, discussing here, uh, remaining uh, the methodology, uh, you know like uh, it will be continuing as usual. So in this particular video, we will be discussing about. Uh, bevel gears, uh, its definition and classification. First few videos we will be focusing mainly on bevel gears. So once bevel gears uh, gets completed, then we will be moving to the, the second type that is warm gears. So what is bevel gear? So bevel gears as usual like other gears, here also it is used to transmit power at a constant velocity ratio between the two shafts whose axes intersect at a certain angle. And the pitch surfaces for the bevel gears are frustum of course. Here you can able to see this. The important thing to be remembered for the bevel gear is like other gears here also these we are using these gears for the transmission of the power. But the important point to be remembered at constant velocity ratio. Constant velocity ratio like well when we speak about the velocity ratio I formula which is equal to n1 by n2 which is equal to d2 by d1 like uh, it will keep on like i1 by i2 like that the velocity ratio will be there but constant velocity ratio means it's supposed to be the ratio to be 2 or 3 or 4 in that particular uh, range only we need to uh, you know like a transmit the power and the very important thing is here the two shafts where uh, assuming that this is the gear 1 and this is the gear 2 that is a, this is a driver and follow here and uh, both the gears has been uh, I mean both the shafts has been mounted with the uh, uh, you know like uh, two bevel gears from the driver shaft I will be transferring power to the follow your shaft and the axis of the shafts if you see the, uh, if you see here in this particular sketch where these two axes are intersect at certain angle that angle I have denoted as the theta s so this is a very important thing and the pitch surfaces of the bevel gears are frustum of cones so I think we are all aware what do you mean by frustum of cone that is if you take an example of any one uh, solid cone where I will be removing a certain part from the top at a certain angle so that only we will be calling as a frustum of cone so here the pitch surface of the bevel gear something uh, looks like or uh, similar to the frustum of cones and uh, uh, if I am calling this as a, like the intermediate point, if you are able to see this line if I am calling means, so the angle uh, uh, angle from the driver to this particular line, it would be a theta P1 and the angle from the follower uh, axis, I mean shaft axis uh, to this uh, reference line will be theta P2. So that, that this we are calling it as the, the, the angular pitches. So theta P1 and theta P2 and R1, R2 would be uh, the radius of the uh, driver and the follower shaft respectively that is for the bevel gear 1 and bevel gear 2. So how can we classify bevel gears? So bevel gears can be classified depending upon the angles between the shafts and the pit surfaces. As I said uh, the theta s is the angle that we are following for the uh, uh, what is that uh, gear 1 and gear 2. So based on the angle that is the theta s we can able to classify the bevel gears. So the first uh, type of gear is nothing but mid gears. So when equal bevel gears that is having equal teeth and equal pitch angle that is a very similar uh, I know like a two bevel gears I will be taking where I will be connecting two shafts whose axis intersect at right angles. So here we can able to see this this is an example for your meter gear where this is the shaft 1 and this is the shaft 2 where the angle between the shaft 1 and shaft 2 which will be intersecting at an angle of 90 degree that is theta is equal to 90 degree if that is the case means uh, uh, with respect to this reference line so theta p1 and theta p2 will be equal so if this is the type of gear we are studying with then we can call it as a mitre gear very easily we can remember that is the right angles to the by each other both the shafts 
of the bevel gears uh, if it is uh, intersecting at the right angle means then we can call it as metric uh, gear next type is angular bevel gears so here when the bevel gears connects two shafts whose axis intersect at an angle other than right angle then they are known as uh, angular bevel gears example if the theta is angle if the, it is not 90 degree instead of 90 degree it can be 80 degree 70 degree 60 degree 50 degree or else it can be like 100 degree 110 degree so other than 90 degree if any angle is there means then we will be calling that type of bevel gear as angular bevel gear here there is no restriction like the angle uh, uh, limitation should be only this much any gear apart from 90 degree everything will come under the second category that is angular bevel gears moving to the third type Crone bevel gears. So when bevel gears connect two shafts whose axis intersect an angle greater than right angle and one of the bevel gears has a pitch angle of 90 degree, uh, then it is known as a crone gear. I think when we discuss the angular bevel gear, I said like 60 degree, 70, 80 degree, everything I said. But even I said more than 90, but that is not the case. So less than 90 degree, whatever the angle is there. So that is nothing but angular bevel gears. And crone bevel gears is nothing but similar not 90 degree but the angle between the shaft 1 and shaft 2 axis should be greater than 90 degree but here one more important uh, thing to be remembered is one of the bevel gears should have the pitch angle of 90 degree and uh, if that is the consider and, and the other thing should be the angle greater than 90 degree then if this is the condition means then we can call that as the crone bevel gears and this crone gear correspond to a rack in spur gearing and moving to the next type that is the fourth type internal bevel gears here when the teeth on the bevel gear are cut on the side of the pitch cone, then they are known as the inter bevel gears. It is a very rare case and very few applications only we can able to see where the teeth on the bevel gears are uh, cutting on the inside of the pitch cone. So here I have written something as a note for your information. That is when the bevel gears uh, may have straight or spiral teeth, then it may be assumed that unless uh, otherwise stated that the bevel gear has straight teeth and the axis of the shaft intersect at right angles. And uh, we shall discuss even the bevel gear advantages. So this gears makes it possible uh, to change the operating angle. So we can, uh, that's what, uh, when we have uh, like metric gears, angular gears, like very, very uh, internal gears, uh, we have many types. So, so these gears, we can, according to the requirement, we can able to make the possible changes uh, with the operating angle. And uh, the differing of the number of teeth, we can call it as an effective diameter on each wheel which allows the mechanical advantages uh, to be changed and what is the what would be the disadvantage so one wheel of such gear is designed to work with its uh, complementary wheel and no other okay this is a very important drawback where other uh, wheel uh, we cannot uh, design because we will be focusing only on the the weaker one and uh, this must be precisely mounted in case if you are uh, making any mistake with the mountings means uh, then that may lead to the immediate failure and the shaft bearings must be capable of uh, supporting significant uh, forces and uh, moving to the applications of the bevel gears so bevel gears are used in uh, differential drives uh, which can transmit power uh, to two axle uh, spinning at uh, uh, different speeds uh, such as those on the cornering automobiles and bevel gears are used as a main mechanism for a handrail as the handle of the drill is turned in a vertical direction the bevel gears change the rotation of the chuck to a horizontal rotation and the bevel gears in your handrail have the added advantage of increasing the speed of rotation of the chuck and this makes it possible to drill a uh, range of materials uh, so with this uh, we can uh, wind up this particular video and uh, we may continue uh, uh, what is it? the terminologies uh, are used in the bevel gears in the next video and along with this applications we have a few more uh, specific applications so that we can able to understand once we start discuss the numericals because in the numericals completely we will be designing uh, based on the applications of the bevels only and that would be very interesting and uh, one one particular uh, uh, applications uh, i will tell you now itself that is a handrail where the bevel gear in a handrail have an added advantage of increase the speed of rotation of the chuck and this makes it possible to drill a range of materials so here the handrail like mostly we will be solving uh, uh, the bevel gear uh, designs are uh, based on the handrail and apart from that even we will be acting like a two axle spinning machines so two axle spinning machines is also very common uh, in um, automobiles so particularly if, if i want to be very specific like cornering automobile applications are uh, very common 
so that for a kind of